saved money nor Instagram is going to make you rich. Welcome back to Broke Man Finance. I am one of your hosts, Adam Wilson. Congratulations to all the high school seniors out there that just graduated. You've officially completed the easiest part of your life. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This is coming from a high school dropout at 16 years old who was once kind of homeless. If anybody understands the struggles of being young, I get it. Let me explain a few things first and then I'm going to show you how you can become a millionaire. But I need you to understand a couple things before we get to that part. I think this is the perfect opportunity for me to talk to all the 18 year olds out there and explain to you how you can become a millionaire without being a, a social media influencer. You're not Kylie Jenner. You're not. It's not going to happen. You're not Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk. It's not going to. There's only one Gary V. There's only one Kylie. The chances of that happen is pretty much. I'm like, it's, it, it ain't going to happen. I ain't even going to try to be optimistic. You, it, you ain't it. I'm not trying to poo-poo on your dreams. I'm just being real with you. A lot. Today's world has gotten really, really soft and people don't like honesty. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not saying that you don't have the talent. I'm just going strictly by the numbers. The chances are really, really low. But by going by the numbers on this, the chances of you becoming a millionaire and getting rich is very, very good. Let me explain. Who is this? That's Jay-Z. Okay, I think we all probably, probably recognize him. But who's he talking to? That, my friends, is Warren Buffett. Now, why on earth would Jay-Z, who is a billionaire, would they be want to talk to Warren Buffett? Because Jay-Z is not stupid. Jay-Z is going to listen to people smarter than him about money. I'm going to explain to you how to become a millionaire by doing one thing. It sounds like a complete crock of BS, but it's not. It is actually very, very simple. The S&P 500 is a collection or index, if you ever hear that term, of the 500 biggest companies, primarily in America, but there are some, uh, some global companies out there too. Now, over the past 90 years, 90 years, think about that number, the S&P 500, the, all those 500 companies, has given a return of almost 10%. Let's just say 10%, just to make it easy. You can invest in the S&P 500 through, you can get a broker, you can do it online, but through an online brokerage like Robinhood, Webull, M1. In fact, I will put a link or to a to Robinhood in the description. So if you sign up with that, I get a free stock. Woo woo, and so do you. Whenever you invest in the entire S&P 500, you're pretty much betting on the entire U.S. economy. Those funds that you put in there is, are getting diced up amongst all those companies. Warren Buffett himself said, "In my view, for most people." The best thing to do is own the S&P 500 index fund. Warren Buffett, also one of the richest men in the world, he wants his family to put a little bit of money into bonds, but 90% of his money is going to track the S&P 500. He said himself that he can't even beat the S&P 500 over time. A few reasons why you should consider investing in just the S&P 500 is one, there's less risk as opposed to an individual stock. It takes the thinking out of it. You just put money in there and let it go. It takes no more research on individual companies, unless you just like to do that like I do. But for most people, they don't like nerding out over balance sheets. They just want to put their money in, make money, and leave it alone. You have consistent double-digit gains year after year. It takes the emotion out of it. If, you're, if you watch a lot of individual stocks, you may think this, this next stock is the hot stock or you're about to lose your ass on another stock and you start getting FOMO. By taking the emotion out of it, you, you stand a higher chance of keeping and making more money. There's no knowledge needed of the stock market. It's done for you. You're making money while you sleep. That's my favorite part. It's completely passive. You put money in and your money is then in turn working for you. Okay, so let me try to explain why that's such a big deal over maybe, let's say a, a low interest rate savings account. Compound interest, simple interest. Simple interest is 
if you took $10,000 and you put it into an account with simple interest, you're, let's say the interest rate is 10%, that kind of mimics the S&P 500 returns. That $10,000 is going to turn into $11,000. That $10,000 is not going to take into account any of the earnings. It's only gonna be calculated based off that $10,000. With compound interest, that $10,000 with a 10% 10 return will then in turn become $11,000. Then you'll get a 10% return on the $11,000 and so on and so on and so on. I'm going to show you a, a couple figures and I'm going to explain to you how over time you'll be a millionaire. It's, it's just this simple and then I'll explain the hard part. If you take $40 a week and put it into the S&P 500 index fund or, or an ETF that tracks it, an exchange traded fund, that's what you'll see on the on M1, Robinhood, uh, Webull, and you're getting that 10% return. After one year, you'll be around $2,193. After five years, you're gonna be around 13,287. After 10 years, you're gonna be around 34,626. After 30 years, you will be around 357,000. And 97 after 50 years which is a long time you'll be 68 years old you would have 2.52 million dollars just by investing $40 a week y'all spend more than that on weed you ain't fooling me you may fool Barbara and Frank whatever your parents names are but you ain't fooling me 40 bucks a week is nothing your phone bills are more than that if you don't believe me ask your parents unless you pay it on your own you can find 40 bucks a week to invest into your future if you really want to have wealth. Now, the hard part is people aren't willing to wait 50 years. Now, I'm basing all of this off of $40 a week. I'm not saying you have to only put $40 a week. A lot of you right now could probably put $100 a week. I don't know. And as you get solidified more in a career throughout your life, you're going to be able to put more and more money in that account. So your chances of getting to that 2.52 million a lot sooner is actually really, really good. I'm just saying bare bones, 40 bucks a week, even through your 40s and 50s, you're still going to be a millionaire based off the historical returns of the S&P 500. It's just that easy. So I have ETFs. My absolute favorite ETF is VOO, V-O-O. Now, some of y'all may be sitting there saying, well, I got a bank account. I got a savings account. I mean, isn't a savings account the same thing? No. $20. 50 years ago buys you way more than $20 now. Every year, the US dollar is losing one to 2% in value. So if you have $10,000 sitting in a savings account, you're losing one to $200 per year in value. My bank is Wells Fargo. I have a small, small savings account there because I don't keep my money there because the interest rate is 0.01%. Meaning for every $10,000 I have in a savings account, it's earning me $1. The national average for these big banks is only 0.06%. Six bucks a year for every 10,000. If I were you, I would find an online bank, I know you can Google, an online bank that is FDIC insured, but, can, but has a high interest rate on their savings account because they have that low overhead because they're, they don't have these brick and mortar stores, these banks to take care of. They can offer a higher interest rate. Not that you're actually going to make money from it, but you offset that inflation. Let's tie this all in together. You have $10,000. In a standard savings account with a national average of 0.06%, if you put $10,000 into a basic savings account, in 20 years, you're looking at $10,120. A whole $120 based off that measly ass, punk ass little savings account interest rate. Now, if you put it in a in an account that tracks that S&P 500 over 20 years and you didn't put anything else with it, you account for the inflation, but you also add in the dividends and the appreciation, that account will be worth 31,200 and that's without ever putting anything else in it. That's the difference. Make your money work for you. That's what nobody ever explained to me and that's what I'm trying to explain to you. That you have to put that money somewhere put that money to work for you. Getting rich over time takes a sacrifice that most people are not willing to make. So save money and invest in things that make you money. Now you're 18 years old, you can invest in the market, be smart with your money, quit spending it on weed. That's all I've got. My name is Adam Wilson, this is Broke Man Finance. Please, if you like the video, hit that uh, thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you can always stay updated whenever we're 
uploading videos. We're trying to bring you more and more content as much as, as much as we can anyway with our schedules. If there's something you'd like to hear about or something you'd like for us to talk about, all you got to do is let us know in the comments. Take care and congratulations, graduates.